открыть огонь по команде. По команде. Я тебе дал координаты снега. Ему нужна помощь. These are radio transmissions intercepted from Russian soldiers in Ukraine. What you're hearing are real-time battlefield communications between rank-and-file units on the front lines. They reveal a Russian military early on, already facing major challenges to get air support and fuel, and even possibly committing war crimes. It's not clear why some Russian military units are using unencrypted frequencies, but what it means is that people with access to a radio receiver can listen in and record their conversations, or interfere. We collected hundreds of recordings like these, painstakingly captured by ham radio operators and open source groups across the world. We focused on radio intercepts from the first 24 hours of the Russian assault on Makariv, a small town along a strategic highway about 30 miles west of Kyiv. These intercepts give a rare unvarnished window into the operations of an invading army plagued by communication errors and logistical problems. So how did we determine these were Russian troops speaking? By linking these radio exchanges with visual evidence and eyewitness accounts. Listen, for example, to this next transmission about a battle in a village called Motizhin. Call sign Yuk-95 reports his unit pulled out of the battle and lost an armored vehicle called an MTLB. This aligns with a telegram post from the mayor of Makarov about an hour earlier and with videos verified by the Times showing Russians entering Motizhin that afternoon. We also see Russian armor littering the area the next day, including at least one MTLB, like Yug-95 reported. Motizhin is just one of many specific battle locations around Makarov that we heard Russian troops mention on the radio intercepts. We cross-checked these with visuals we geolocated to document sites and times of Russian military activity. What we were able to capture are mostly visual and audio fragments, not necessarily the full sequence of events. But by piecing them together, we can establish the dynamics that were playing out on the ground during the first attack on Makarov which was a bucolic and peaceful place until February 27th. That morning, locals spot Russian military vehicles moving into the area. Within hours, we hear Russian troops on the radio giving battlefield updates. Over the course of the assault, Russians openly disclose attack plans for anyone to hear. Their language is often raw. Looking out of their windows, residents see firefights erupting. In the following radio transmission, we hear repeated orders to strike an entire residential area after it's cleared of so-called property, which is likely code for Russian personnel or equipment. Было 
медленнее, медленнее, говори еще раз, повтори. Убрать первое хозяйство от населенного пункта и накрыть населенный пункт артиллерией. Прием. Visual evidence and interviews show multiple instances where Russians appeared to have openly fired on civilians around Makarov. The following security camera footage shows a Russian armored vehicle firing several rounds into this sedan, without any apparent warning or provocation. The passengers an elderly couple, were killed instantly. Videos and photos show Russian forces did take significant losses. And at one point, we hear a frantic dispatch from a unit under attack. There are even moments when call sign Baran 30 sounds close to tears. Over the course of the initial battle, the skies were rocked with explosions. In a series of radio exchanges, we hear how communication failures delay urgent requests for air support amid mounting casualties. Thirty minutes later, air support still hasn't arrived. Video evidence suggests some Russian units were not only attacked, but left stranded. The radio chatter is full of troops who lack critical supplies. And Russian troops face yet another menace. Ukrainian interlopers mocking them on their open radio channels. Russian forces are now using more code words and cell phones to communicate, but signals are still compromised. The Times has found that even many generals are using unsecured phones and radios, which has led to at least one getting tracked and killed by Ukrainians. Ukrainian officials claim they have been pushing Russians out of the town of Makariv for now. But fighting in the area continues. So does the radio chatter. <laughs> 